morning. I want to welcome all of you today, this beautiful day, to Miles Standish State Forest, one of DCR's uh, largest uh, state forests in this part of the state. Uh, beautiful day, and we all appreciate everyone being here. I want to welcome everyone, especially, and, and thank our partners. Uh, Deputy Chief Kane from the Plymouth Fire Department, uh, Massachusetts State Fire Marshal Peter Ostrowski, uh, our, our friends from the Massachusetts State Police Helicopter Wing, uh, members of the Plymouth Fire Department and DCR um, uh, Fire Fire Division, as well as Deputy Commissioner Priscilla Gigas and uh, Director of Forest Stewardship Peter Church. Um, it's great for all of us you know, to be here today to talk about the importance of the work that, that is done and the partnerships that are, that are, that are working every day, uh, in, as well as messaging fire safety and prevention, and that's, that's the key point to this week. <clears throat> DCR Fire Control has a three-pronged approach to fire management in, here in the Commonwealth. First is suppression, assisting municipalities of clean out wildfires. The second is detection with our 42 active towers operated by DCR Fire Control to locate fires when they're small. And prevention, which includes education, our Smokey the Bear program, and fuel reduction, including mechanical and prescribed fires. We're asking the public to help prevent unwanted human-caused fires by taking personal responsibility for fire safety and appreciate the working with our partners to help spread that message. Um, I want to, you know, three, Things that DCR brings to um, to uh, to this that I, I, I appreciate are you know, the VFA grants that we do with our smaller uh, uh, partner fire agencies, the equipment that we're able to uh, to acquire, and the training uh, that we do on an annual basis. Uh, it tells me we do about 400 uh, trainings, fire, individual firefighters each year in wildfire prevent, uh, fighting and, and prevention, uh, which is key to all that we do. Um, I want to introduce a great uh, group here today and I want to introduce um, DCR Chief Fire Warden Dave Salino. Thanks Commissioner and uh, welcome everybody um, from DCR and um, all of our other partners, Plymouth Fire Department, Department of Fire Services, uh, Mass State Police, um, from uh, the Office of, uh, of Public Safety. And uh, so what I want to talk about is uh, First of all, I always open up with this, and that is, um, is Massachusetts really known for wildfires? Well, you know, here's our current stats for 2020. We've had 1,079 wildfires to date in 2020. And, um, and, and it's because of a couple of reasons. One is drought. And, uh, but it's, this is not uncommon for the state of Massachusetts when the conditions are right. Um, so we've had 1,079 fires, but we've only burned um, just under 800 acres. And there's a reason for that as well, and that's the strong partnership that you see here today between local fire departments, um, other secretariats in departments like fire services, DCR, forest fire control, um, and the efforts that we provide together um, in an effort to um, help prevent the public safety issue um, with wildfire. So as the commissioner mentioned, um, DCR Forest Fire Control has um, a simple mission, although it's laid out simply, but it's uh, simply helping the cities and towns um, to detect wildfires with our fire tower program, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, but also providing assistance and suppression, uh, providing training assistance, as the commissioner mentioned, um, we work hand in hand with both the fire academy and the local fire departments to provide that wildfire specific training on a yearly basis, all year round as a matter of fact. Um, so what I want to talk about is, is first of all, the message to the public, and we, we do this nonstop in a year like this, and that is that we want the public to be very aware that they're also one of our partners. And so we can provide all of the technical assistance and responses and all the technology that goes with it. But, but if we don't have the cooperation of the public, um, we're challenged. And we've seen it this year. And so, so first and foremost, especially in a drought year like this, we want the public to understand what the surroundings are like. 
And so we don't want to dissuade people from enjoying uh, outdoor recreation, but they need to be aware of the surroundings, and especially when it comes to using um, outdoor incendiaries or having a campfire or a simple cooking fire. And so when we get into high uh, drought indices like we're in currently, the public needs to understand that every single campfire needs to be put out fully until it's cold. And the public has a responsibility to understand that if you don't have the ability to put that campfire out cold so that the soil is wet, then you probably need to avoid having a campfire to get all together. Um, we want you to be careful in your own backyard. We need you to, we need to understand that on days like today, um, we've got a bright sunny day today and it's, and it's windy. Um, fuels are very dry. And so that even a uh, stray cigarette butt thrown out of a vehicle into grasses along the highway can start a fire, um, a wildland fire. And, and it will spread rapidly on a day like today. Uh, the last thing is I wanna mention fireworks. And so fireworks, although illegal in Massachusetts, we've had a number of wildland fires that were started this year by fireworks. And the marshal, I think, is going to um, build on that message as well. He's gonna have some comments um, regarding fireworks. Um, the, the third thing I wanna mention is overall on the, on the fire prevention messaging is that over 98% of all wildland fires in Massachusetts are human caused in some form or fashion. We've had a few lightning strike fires this year um, because it's been so dry and we've had lightning events uh, with storm cells throughout the summer. However, 98% of our fires are human caused in some form or fashion. And I think it's important for the public to understand that, especially in a year like this, where we've got extra challenges from drought but also from COVID. And the COVID um, issue has been um, a real stressful issue for the fire service as a whole to manage um, just on a daily basis. And when we add wildland fire to the mix, um, it just adds to the stress for these folks to have to manage on a daily basis in response. So I think that's important. Lastly, I wanna talk a little bit more about the partnership in closing. And it's, um, so it's a partnership in fire response. It's a partnership in detection. And so one of the things that we're very proud of at Massachusetts DCR, Massachusetts in general, is that we have one of the last stronghold fire tower programs in the country. Fire tower technology started here in Plymouth in the 1880s. And ironically, um, to date, we have one of the last um, bastions of a strong fire tower network. We still have 42 fire towers operable in the state of Massachusetts. And today there'll be at least 23 to 24 of those key towers up across the state, um, having eyes in the sky, um, looking out for smoke so we can get our partners from the local fire departments onto the scene of a wildland fire while it's small. And it's very important in these conditions that we've had this year that we get to these fires while they're small before they have a chance to grow. We have two or three fires already today that are ongoing and there'll be multi-day events because of the drought induced conditions. And so let's talk about that drought and how it, how it relates to that partnership. So uh, in a drought year like this, once we get to the situation that we're in now, we knew uh, three weeks ago or four weeks ago that every fire that gets started that's at least a half an acre and has at least a couple of hours to burn is going to burn very deep. And our folks here um, from the fire service can vouch for the fact that these fires will be multi-day events, time consuming, labor intensive. And we've had a number of fires across the state that took as many as 30 to 35 days to declare that they were fully out. One in particular in Leverett, Massachusetts, which was 56 acres. Um, it took over a month to declare that fire out and it is exhausting on the town resources and the state resources um, to work that fire and work that problem. So um, the next thing is, um, is mitigation. And so mitigation is, is, is part of what we um, provide as a service to the towns on our own state lands. 
And so our friends from Plymouth have, um, have worked with us here at, at Miles Standish State Forest on, on fuels mitigation and management of fuels to help um, ease that public safety concern with wildland fire in a repeat of history here where we had large fires up through the late 1900s um, it, here in Plymouth. And the last thing is training. As the commissioner mentioned, we train on average over 400 uh, firefighters a year across the state working in partnership with the academy. And that's in all levels of wildland fire um, from, uh, from basic wildland fire tactics and strategies to incident management, command and control and organization and even the fire behavior aspects of wildland fire. So we're pretty proud of that partnership. Um, the National Wildland Fire Management Cohesive Strategy, enacted by Congress in 2009 and finalized in 2014, directed all fire agencies across the country to work in a very cohesive manner together, state, federal, local, as a partner. And uh, Massachusetts can be pretty proud that we followed that formula. We have a great example here um, for you today. And, uh, and one of those three goals is wild, safe and effective and efficient wildfire response. And, uh, and we have some good examples of that today. So with that, I'd like to introduce the um, State Fire Marshal, Pete Ostrowski. Thank you, Chief Salino. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, I just want to first say uh, thank you. Thank you, Smokey, and thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Chief Salino and to our partners from Plymouth for the opportunity to join you today as we um, share a couple of important messages. Uh, this is a very important uh, and significant week for the fire service as we commemorate um, Fire Prevention Week and October being Fire Prevention Month. This is a very timely outing for us to speak to some of the issues and I think Chief Salino uh, eloquently spoke to a number of the issues that face us on the wildfire front. The Department of Fire Services is responsible uh, to partner with other state agencies in support of municipal fire services and how we can strengthen their response and activities on a variety of levels. One of which, as was mentioned, is suppression. And the Department of Fire Services is proud to partner uh, and collaborate with our sister agencies in the Commonwealth, the Department of Conservation and Recreation, the Bureau of Forest Fire Control, State Police, Mass Emergency Management, in support of local fire departments. That's our main mission, is to make sure that the local fire departments have the support that they need to do their job. Today we highlight the concern that is significant as we speak with outside fires. This fire prevention week we ask people to serve up fire safety. Cooking fires are a significant source of fires in the Commonwealth. We see uh, it as a leading cause of fires and a leading cause of fire deaths. So we join the fire service across the nation around the world to highlight that issue. And outdoor fires, whether they be for cooking or enjoyment, are an important factor on our fire prevention week. We encourage people to use safe practices. The drought conditions have caused us to have significant fires, and we're seeing the local fire departments and the state and federal resources that are deployed having to use tactics and strategies that we haven't had to use in a long time. But given the dry conditions and given the unique situation that we face, we're seeing fire spread and fires take hold. So we're very fortunate to have excellent working relationships and uh, the strength is our ability to work together to bring these things to a, to a appropriate end and also to highlight the message. And the message is use caution when you're out there with any kind of fire. I want to just zero in a little bit on fireworks. We do see a significant issue with fireworks in the Commonwealth. Fireworks are illegal to possess, purchase, transport, or use 
in Massachusetts. Sadly, each year, and this year is not uh, unique, we see significant injury as a result of illegal use of fireworks. In addition, it's a great concern in these drought conditions for outside fires. We see a number ignited as a result of the improper and illegal use of fireworks. So we encourage people to uh, use caution, safety with any kind of fire, especially outside fires at this time. And we appreciate the ability to collaborate and work together with you as we move forward. Thank you. Deputy Kane, uh, Plymouth Fire Department, and uh, definitely with these drought conditions, uh, the uh, DCR has helped us in a lot. They're, they've been heavy lifters helping us uh, combat uh, a lot of these fires that we've had. We've had, uh, probably in the last three years, an additional 50 new members to our department, and uh, forming a partnership uh, with the state here in training. You've been providing us training uh, for forest fires, uh, for a lot of these new people that uh, have, have never seen uh, uh, this aspect of firefighting. It's, it's pretty unique to the town of Plymouth. Uh, not only do we, you know, fight the regular house fires and, uh, you know, your medical calls, a big portion of training is here on the reservation. Um, the last uh, fire that we've had uh, is, is evident to that as far as uh, the drought conditions and has put a lot of strain on our, uh, our workforce. Uh, we've gotten through that uh, th through the training and through the help of the uh, DCR. Also, I want to mention about the uh, fire towers. The fire towers have come through every time for us uh, in recent weeks, uh, spotting uh, fires and getting them uh, out rapidly. Uh, without them uh, continuing, it could have been uh, many acres uh, because of uh, uh, quick thinking and uh, uh, from the fire tower and spotting these fires, they've gotten them uh, pretty well under control. Uh, a big part, and I hope to always uh, have these towers in operation. As far as uh, uh, what the marshal was speaking about with fireworks, we have seen a lot of fireworks, and uh, uh, it does uh, impact a lot of uh, uh, not only residential but the uh, the wildland uh, interface. And uh, hopefully, we can get that under control and uh, ask the public, uh, please uh, don't use any of that firework. Uh, another thing is the. Um, The, uh, is it the training, we went over the training uh, that we've had here. Um, the uh, urban uh, interface that we've had, we're using that a lot in our fire prevention and uh, building construction uh, using FireWise designs. Uh, we're uh, working in partnership with the DCR, going over a lot of that. Uh, since Plymouth is growing, we're only about 60% uh, about built out. We are encroaching upon a lot of the uh, open space areas, and so we're incorporating a lot of firewise design at the uh, permit side of uh, things before things are built and developments. And hopefully, uh, in working with the DCR uh, in fire prevention, uh, we're going to eliminate a lot of uh, wildfires and uh, having safe uh, communities. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, again, I want to thank all of our partners who are here today. Uh, 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 Marshal Peter Ostowski, uh, Deputy Chief uh, Kane, Battalion Chief Roy, Smokey the Bear, um, Chief Salino, and all of you here, uh, especially our, uh, our partners from the State Police who are going to be doing a demonstration for us. And I appreciate everybody being here on this beautiful day and again this important message of uh, fire prevention uh, and this National Fire Prevention Week. So 
Again, thank you, everybody, uh, and have a great day and a safe day. Thank you.